Let's have a chat about the nocebo effect. So the nocebo effect is like the dark side of the placebo effect. Essentially, it's when we have a negative outcome because we believe we'll have a negative outcome. So one of the ethical concerns for doctors is if you say to someone that they're likely to experience a side effect, that can have a nocebo effect. People are expecting a negative outcome and therefore they experience the negative outcome. Three super interesting experiments. Two of them are from a video by Ben Goldacre, which is awesome. Uh, So, so good. Ben Ben Goldacre is amazing. He's the author of the blog, Bad Science, and some really cool books as well. So I'll put the links to that in here. The first experiment actually looks at the the placebo effect and the nocebo effect together. So I wanted to talk about that one first. So essentially what they were looking at is patients who are experiencing arm pain. And what they did is they assigned these participants to two different groups. In one group, they gave them a pill and they said, this pill will help with your arm pain. And in the second group, they did sham acupuncture, whereas essentially that is, it's not about putting the needles in any specific place. They just put the needles anywhere and they say that that will help with the arm pain. And what they saw happen was that both groups said that they felt better after receiving the treatment. But Also, both groups experienced these nocebo effects and they weren't even told about them. So they weren't told that there would be any side effects. They weren't told there would be any bad effects. But the participants from both groups said they felt sluggish from receiving these treatments uh, that were actually not treatments. They were just placebos. So that kind of takes us into this nocebo world, right? That people who think they've had a treatment may also expect to experience some negative consequences of that treatment. And that brings in a, into question, like I said, ethically, whether we should be talking about things like side effects, whether we should be talking about things that could go wrong as a result of treating that patient because it sort of primes them to think that, oh, okay, I should have a negative effect from taking this drug. Okay, experiment two is another interesting one and it was done on asthma patients. It's kind of a bit of a weird experiment. It's not very nice. Uh, Nocebo is a hard one to study because you don't really want to make people have you know, bad experiences. And so the ethics around it is quite tricky. So for one group, what they did is they sat participants down and they basically put this saline nebulizer on their face. Now, saline solution sort of mist going into uh, the lungs of an asthma patient doesn't really do anything, right, like good or bad. It kind of just has no effect, right? Um, And then they took participants in the other group and they said they did exactly the same thing and they said that this uh, nebulizer has an irritant in it. It has an allergen and 50% of respondents had an asthma attack as a result of thinking that they were being exposed to an allergen. A bit of a nasty experiment but demonstrates the point that this nocebo effect is very, very real. This has a physiological effect, like we were seeing in the placebo effect as well. So then these experiments were taken one step further, and this is where it starts to get really, really interesting. So if we look at that asthma example, instead of having something that has no effect, what experimenters now did is they started looking at giving patients active ingredients that would have an effect. Now, they tested both the placebo and the nocebo. So asthma participants were divided into two groups. One group was the placebo group. Now, what they did with the placebo group is they gave them a drug that actually would make their symptoms worse. They gave them a bronchoconstrictor. And what a bronchoconstrictor does is it essentially... uh, constricts or closes the the bronchioles that are responsible for getting oxygen to our lungs. So it can make asthma symptoms worse. But 50% of participants said that this drug that's actually meant to have a negative effect had a positive effect and eased their symptoms because they thought it was a bronchodilator, which is what you use to help get oxygen to the lungs. But here's the other really interesting thing. Then what they did is they gave the second group a bronchodilator, which actually does improve your symptoms. And they said, we're going to give you a bronchoconstrictor, which asthma patients know can make them feel worse. And just by saying that, the effect of that bronchodilator in easing the symptoms reduced by 50%. So just the wording that's used has a massive impact on how the patient feels. Now, the third nocebo experiment I want to explain to you sort of takes this to a whole new level. Now, they ran this experiment with six 
different groups. Half of the groups received a sugar pill, like a placebo effect pill, and the other half received a drug called carisoprodol. And what carisoprodol does is it's a muscle relaxant. Now let's talk about the placebo groups first. So one group was told that they were getting a stimulant that would actually make them feel really tense. Another group was told that they were getting a relaxant that would make them feel relaxed. And the other group was given, the third group was given no information about what the pill was meant to do. And then on the other side, we had the same thing. So these three groups were given the carisiprodol. One group was told that instead of being a muscle relaxant, it was going to be a muscle stimulant. The other group was told that it was going to be a muscle relaxant. And the other group was given no information. So in the placebo group, the people who were told that they were receiving a stimulant were the most uptight and tense as a result of being told that information. But the really interesting part is what happens on the other side of the experiment. So in the three groups that were given the muscle relaxant, the group that was told they were receiving the stimulant were the most uptight out of all six groups. So even though they were given something that was a muscle relaxant, their belief that they were receiving a stimulant actually worked against them more so than in the placebo group. And part of the reason for that could be that because they could feel that there was some sort of effect on their muscle, that then they actually felt more tense as a result of it because it's like, oh, I feel like I'm actually getting the drug. Therefore, I feel really uptight and tense. So they were the most tense, even though they got the drug that should have made them feel relaxed. But the other interesting thing is that the group that received the muscle relaxant that were told they received the muscle relaxant had the highest level of the muscle relaxant in their bloodstream because they received that treatment and then they were told that it worked and therefore it had more of an effect. Now, this brings up some really interesting questions in terms of what we should be doing when it comes to how we talk to patients. And as someone who works in business, it also makes me think about how we should talk about the results that we get for our clients. Because people believing that through going undergoing a certain process, things will work better, actually have more of an effect. So you could argue that something like homeopathic medicine, which is essentially just like taking a sugar pill, could be quite a good thing because it doesn't harm patients, but it could have this sort of positive placebo effect. However, if you don't contextualize that correctly, and if you're a homeopath that's saying this could have a negative effect, then you also could be doing something quite unethical because patients will experience those negative effects as well. On the other side, when it comes to doctors treating patients, a lot of the time doctors need to think about, you know, how how they communicate things like side effects and also the effectiveness of the treatment. We know that if patients believe that the treatment's effective, then therefore they're going to actually potentially benefit more from that treatment. So should doctors be saying things like, look, this has a 30% chance of working, or should they say, this is going to be brilliant, this is going to solve your problem, even if they're kind of lying? I mean, for me personally, I actually think it's a really complex issue, and I don't think it's a simple right or wrong answer. So I'd be really interested in your thoughts on this. What do you think? Do you think we should be telling patients with more certainty that things will have a positive effect? Do you think we should be keeping side effects quiet? And My other question is for those of you who are working in business as consultants and coaches is should we be telling our clients that what we do has a really positive effect, even if we're not sure, or even if the results don't prove that they do? Should we be saying that the processes that we use will have a really positive impact on their life or on their business or on their health because we know that that will actually improve the way that they feel about it? I mean, lying to clients in order to help their business, like it does the ends justify the means? Really interested in your thoughts on that one as well. I'll see you soon for another episode of What Science Says. If you want to also learn about the placebo effect, you can check out part one of this episode here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the latest content from my channel.